Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and today we are going to be on the horizontal mill here, and we are gonna basically do a repeat of the last video I did where I made those shafts um, for the big sprockets. We did a few videos back, and we're gonna actually mill the keyways horizontally. Um, and the advantage to that is that the chips will fall out of the keyway as we cut it. Um, I got the oil coolant, which we have a new bigger hose on, um, but I still have that flow issue. Um, I thought it was resolved, but it's getting worse again. So we're gonna have to tear into this machine eventually and fix that. But we're gonna get on this to get those keyways cut on the horizontal. And before anybody comments about the mess in the shop, and I know it's coming, when you're working 16 to 18 hours a day and all you're doing is pushing out parts, pushing out parts, pushing out parts, you push away the cleaning part to keep the production going. And that's what I've been doing for about the last four months here. So um, when this video comes out, we're gonna be about two months behind on, on the videos. And there's just so much going on here. We're trying to get things cleaned up, trying to get things out of here, but it's, it's very difficult when you gotta focus on the work and hitting the deadlines. So we're gonna start right here. I'm using an ER40 collet chuck. And that's what we're gonna use to hold our end mill. Um, this is a 50 to 40 taper adapter. And you're probably wondering why I'm using 40 taper tooling when I don't have a machine that takes 40 taper. Stay tuned. I'll go ahead and get the table all cleaned up. So we're just gonna set the uh, shaft right in the T-slot and that'll help us indicate the straightness. I want this as clean as possible. Before we really get started here, I'm just going to throw an indicator up here on my shaft and just check it for straightness, just out of curiosity. Doesn't hurt to be overly cautious. Perfect. Alright, we'll check it here and just see what we got. That's all perfect. Yeah, excellent. All right, go ahead and start. Put our half inch collet in and our edge finder and then locate the edge of the part and then find center. And then we can throw the end mill in and start milling it. To hit center on my z-axis I got to come up to 1.968 which is half of my shot, uh, shaft diameter and the quarter inch offset of my of my uh, edge finder. All right now that we found center we'll go ahead and take our um, edge finder out of there and we'll throw our end mill in.
All right, what we got here is a brand new 7 ace cobalt center cutting four flute end mill. And the reason I'm doing this um, so right to size is the rigidity of this machine is significantly better than when I did it in the bridge port. So that's why we're doing this and we're gonna see how it works. I, this extra shaft, um, so if I screw it up, I screw it up. Worst case, I don't, you know, best case, I don't screw it up and we got a good usable part, but the tolerance on this keyway is is plus, not minus. So we should be okay having it coming in horizontally. The chip should fall out. Having the oil, uh, flood oil coolant, we should be in good shape. So let's get this in to our start point. We'll start over here, come in, and we'll cut in. Um, we're gonna take 200 thou, our first pass, and then feed this way. Well, the really hard part with this machine is visibility. I can't see what I'm doing because the cutter's on the opposite side of me. It looks like we're close there. Ninety-five RPM. I think that'll be a good starting point. Let's bring it in to touch it off. There. Zero my readout. Lock her all down so nothing moves on me, and we'll just start bringing it in. Um, actually, we'll get the oil going first. There's 200 deep. All right, I'm gonna start feeding at two and three eighths inch per minute just to see how it's cutting to start with. And I'm watching for any tool deflection. I backed it off, so I didn't stop it in the cut. I backed it off, but that came out really nice. I'm gonna grab my caliper, just measure this, and see where we're at. Now here's the hard part: is getting in there with the caliper and measuring it. Actually, we're we're right where we need to be. The tool deflection was really good. So I think we can run with this. That's really the nice part about the horizontal milling is the chip falls out of the cut. So you don't have that uh, um, chip binding up in there causing deflection. Um, it's just a, a much better way to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll, we'll keep cutting this to its uh, full depth of keyway. Um, I think 495, I'll, I'll double check that in the book, but I think 495 is my depth. to take another 200 on this pass and it was 495 was the overall depth uh, plus five minus zero so we're good
I shut the machine off because I wanted to take a look and not hear it. Um, I got a little further to go. It's so hard to see where you are with the horizontal. I need to come the end of this keyway right up to this shoulder right here on each end. And I'm not quite there, so I'm gonna hand feed that in, get it there, set my zero, and then we'll take our last cut and come clear to the other end and get the full length of the keyway and we should be all done. So I brought myself over a little step stool here. Uh, after I raised this machine to make it more comfortable for being a horizontal, um, as a horizontal mill with horizontal cutters, I uh, raised it up for that comfort, but now it's too tall for, for using it as a horizontal spindle. So I gotta keep, keep a little stool around. Not that it gets used much for this, but all right, measure our depth here at the side of the... And we are dead nuts on. We are supposed to be 437 deep from the side of our keyway, which was 495 from the peak. Um, and we are 441. So we are within tolerance, plus five on depth. Very good. Um, I will grab the gauge blocks and we'll see how this looks. All right, here we have our 750 and our 125. Oh, that just, just fit. And I have a plus one on the size, minus zero. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the 126. So here's our 876. I measured it with a micrometer. And, come on. Won't quite go, so that's, oh, there it went. All right, perfect. Still within tolerance, I'll grab the 877. So the next size up and we'll measure that, check it. All right, here's the next one. That's 877, I can't even get it in there. Perfect. Well, that's just what we wanted. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this thing down and uh, get her off of here and uh, keep going on the rest of them. I hope this video wasn't too short. 
Um, you know, it's there's a lot going on here. I'm a few months behind yet, working on getting caught up. So we're going to be behind on videos for a while. So just stick with me. And like I said earlier, they're uh, you know with the 40 taper tooling. Stay tuned because I am looking at some a different machine, different vertical mill coming up here. So. We'll see how the rest of the year goes, but that's a very distinct possibility that it'll be coming soon. All right, all I got left, take my handy dandy little deburring tool here and deburr the edge of the hole, or the edge of the keyway. All right, and this shaft is ready to go. Well, one down and six, seven more to go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something. Obviously, working with a horizontal shaft uh, spindle on a keyway is, is, and any milling really, is, is ideal because the chip just falls out of the way. You don't have to use air to blow it out. You don't have to do so many things. It's a much better setup. Um, this is significantly more uh, rigid than the bridge port. Um, it worked out really well and very happy with the outcome. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful cut in there. Um, two and Two and three eighths inch per minute seemed to be about the magic number. It worked really well. And uh, 295 RPM, just very happy with that. Again, I'm still using ATF in the mill. Um, I was hoping that would flush out any more garbage in there. It's working good as a cutting oil. It's darkening up, it's flushing stuff out. If you watched any of my previous videos, you saw where I was having flow problems. I'm having flow problems again. Um, I think what needs to happen now is I gotta tear into the mill and get the pump out and then probably rebuild the pump. So that day is coming once I get caught up and get all the work done. And I hope I didn't get too much splatter on the camera lens. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.